Uh, our next, next speaker this morning is Dan oh. McPherson. He's going to be speaking about OpenVert yeah. and then Aeolus. Is that how you pronounce it? Overt and Aeolus, yeah. Okay. Um, is this on? Is this on? Yep, that's working. Oh, okay. <coughs> Can we, um, do you want to use this? This exceed uh, the potential of commercial products, uh, commercial closed source products. Um, and that's why I believe that we're gathered here at this particular mini-conf, um, because we're approaching a new era, if you will, of open source cloud computing and virtualization technologies that rival commercial offerings such from VMware and um, Microsoft. So I'm here today to talk about one of those technologies, which is Overt. Um, it's an open source KVM virtualization platform um, and it's built as an open source alternative to vSphere. Um, it's the upstream model that we use at Red Hat uh, for Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization. Yeah, I might want to do that as well. Go on, okay. Okay, just a little bit about me as well. I've been working with virtualization technologies for the last six years, including VMware, Zen, KVN Systems, and for the last two years I've worked with Red Hat uh, as a technical writer for the cloud and virtualization products. Um, I've been writing for um, Overt Rev for about the last year and a half. Um, my favorite part, which I'll get to, is the API. It's a REST-based API, and I find it very clean and easy to use, so more on that later. Um, so what is Overt? Large-scale centralized management server, desktop virtualization system. Um, so it's easily scalable and provides, as I said, an open source alternative to vSphere, vCenter. Um, a little bit about the community. So the Overt community is an open merit-based governance model um, inspired by both Apache and the Eclipse Foundation uh, foundations. Um, now the Overt board consists of members from Red Hat, SUSE, Canonical, um, Intel, NetApp, IBM, and Cisco. Um, and as well as the board, we've got um, the Overt project is divided several different sub-projects, um, currently 16 of them. Um, so we've got some key goals, so to build a community around all levels of the virtualization stack, um, so the hypervisor manager, the GUI, the API, um, to deliver both a cohesive complete stack and discreetly reusable components for open virtualization management, um, to provide a release for the project on a well-defined schedule, so six months, um, focus on management of the KVM hypervisor with exceptional guest support beyond Linux, and provide a venue for user and developer communication and coordination. Um, we're also always on the lookout for people to join our teams, especially in the areas of development design, um, testing, documentation, and translation. Um, I'll go a bit into the architecture now. So Overt, um, an overt environment consists of three main components. So you've got the overt engine, which is the, the, management, um, the, the management component. You've got overt node, which acts as the hypervisor. And you also require storage for virtual hard disks and ISOs. So I'll discuss each of these components individually. So starting with overt. So it's a JBoss Java application used to communicate with hosts and to manage the entire virtual machine lifecycle, including deployment, starting, stopping, migrating, and monitoring of virtual machines. Um, it provides several methods for interacting with your environment. So you've got the web admin portal, um, web-based UI application on top of the engine. Um, Sysadmins can use it to perform the advanced actions. There's also a self-service user portal, simplified web-based UI, um, just for simple management use cases. Uh, you've also got a REST API, which allows third-party applications to perform virtualization actions. Um, there's also a software development kit, uh, which provides Python bindings for the API, and command line shell, so, which communicates with the engine via the software development commit and, um, kit, and you can use line commands and script actions to control your environment. Um, so here's a couple of screenshots. So what we have here is the main administration console. 
Um, a couple of screens here, so um, creating a new host or adding a new host to your environment. You can also set power management features as well. Um, setting up networks as well. This uses a drag and drop uh, interface to be able to bond and attach um, your interfaces to networks. So for example, here's bonding in action. Sorry for the quality of video there. Might not be able to read some of the, the options there. Then you can edit your bond and attaching to a network, a logical network. Just as simple as drag and drop. Um, creating a new server or desktop. So you've got the base information there, memory size, how many vCPUs, um, which operating system that you're using. Um, you can also specify which, um, or these are actually for, for Windows VMs, so you've got your sysprep configuration there for time zone um, and also domain. Um, you've also got support for USB and smart card as well, plus also the two different um, uh, remote access protocols, so you've got SPICE and VNC. Um, host aspects, so you can choose to run on a specific host or you can let Overt manage that directly. Um, you've also got migration options there and CPU pinning, so you can choose for a, specify, a specific core um, in your host. Um, also high, avail avail uh, high availability. Um, you can also set um, pre-allocated uh, pre memory, so maximum num uh, or the minimum amount of memory guaranteed, um, as opposed to um, the maximum memory that you set in general settings. So, if uh, a VM is not as resource intensive at a, at a specific time, it saves that memory for other VMs to use. Um, can define the boot sequence, and also you've got custom properties. So this is based on. Uh, well, the custom properties are based on the uh, hooks, which I'll get into for the, um, the hypervisor. So you've got a simplified version of the user portal and also an extended version. So it allows you to actually define um, virtual hard disks um, and uh, also your network interfaces. The REST API. So I find, it, like I said, I find it very easy to, to navigate through. Um, basically, you've got all your virtual um, resources as collections, um, and to navigate them, like for example, to get navigate to a particular host, um, and then sub collections based upon that. So you can look at the host um, network interface and see the information there. Uh, Over at Node, this is the second component. So. We've got two versions, so there's the standalone hypervisor, which a very small distribution, a custom spin of Fedora, um, and it uses just enough Fedora to, to run on the machine, so it runs on any RHEL hardware, um, Fedora, uh, and as an alternative to Overt Node, you can also use a full host, so for example, you can use a Fedora host and install um, VDSM and LibVirt to act as a hypervisor. So key aspects, you've got configuration of hosts, networking and shared storage. Uh, it uses LibVirt for the VM lifecycle operations. Multi-threaded, multi-process. Uh, it uses Vert IO serial to communicate with the guest agents. You've got customized clustering support for logical volume management that scales to hundreds of nodes. Um, implements distributed image repository over the supported storage types. Um, and you've also got a multi-host system with one concurrent metadata writer. As I also mentioned, there's a hooks mechanism for um, overt node. So this allows you to add, um, add your own scripts and modify VM operations. Um, so they're called at specific events. Um, so this gives you an opportunity. So let's just say, for example, there's a new feature in KVM that's not in overt as yet. You can create a script to be able to uh, make use of that particular feature. Um, and also you've got storage as well. So Overt includes support for several file and block storage methods. So 
you've got local storage on the actual hosts themselves. You've got NFS, you've got iSCSI, you've got Fiber Channel and POSX storage, such, a, such as Gluster. Um, so these storage domains provide a means for, to store disk images for virtual machines, storage for exported virtual machines, and ISO images for installation media. Um, and the data storage domains for the virtual machines also support uh, copy on write and raw formats for creating the, the disk images. Um, some key features, so scalability, you can easily create and attach as many overt nodes to your environment to increase virtual machine resources. Um, high availability, so if a host fails, you can restart a VM on another host. Um, oh, you can restart its VMs on another host, sorry. Um, you've also got host live migration, so you can move running VMs between hosts without any downtime. Um, storage live migration, so you're able to move running VMs from one storage domain to another. So if, say for example, you've got virtual machines on an NFS, um, and you want to move them, you've set up a, a data domain for um, on a block storage on iSCSI, you can easily migrate the virtual machines from one data domain to another without any loss of, without any downtime. Um, you've also got network filtering, so you've got control over your network traffic as well. Uh, port mon uh, mirroring, so the ability to mirror network traffic to a specific VM. Um, image management, so template-based provisioning, uh, thin provisioning and snapshots. Um, on the snapshots, you've got live snapshots, so you can easily take um, a snapshot of a VM without, on a running VM without any downtime. Um, direct LUN support, so you're able to attach block devices um, as volumes directly to the vi uh, virtual machines as well. Um, you've got shared and floating disks, so you can hot plug disks between several virtual machines. Um, just as long as it's not a, a system disk, you can actually share um, disks in between virtual machines. Um, you've got system scheduler, so this allows you to load balance your VMs based upon uh, resources and uh, resource usage and policies. Um, there's a power saver, so Overt focuses your virtual machines on fewer hosts during off-peak times. So in addition, um, Overt provides you with options to control your host power, man uh, power management operations, as I uh, showed before. Uh, you've got a maintenance manager, so if you need to patch a hypervisor, um, you can do so without any downtime uh, by just setting maintenance windows. Uh, you've also got monitoring tools, so uh, these are system status. Uh, these show the system status for all objects in the environment. So, if your VMs, your host, your networking, your storage, your clusters, your data centers. Um, a new feature, SLA MOM. It's a policy engine. I'll just skip to the next slide because there we go. Um, so, this helps with uh, a policy engine to help with memory management. You've got um, a data warehouse and reports. So, it uses a customized Jasper reports and Jasper server to provide high-level reports about your virtual environment over set periods of time. You've got um, OVF import and export. So you're able to import and export VMs using open virtuali virtualization format files. Uh, V2V and P2V tools, so you can convert physical servers or VMs from VMware and Zen to KVM. Um, you've got two different protocols there. You've got VNC and you've also got SPICE protocol. Um, USB and smart card support, so you're able to pass through um, client-attached USB and smart cards to virtual machines. Um, a new feature for the next release is um, Gluster management support, so um, it features the ability to manage your Gluster storage volumes and bricks and integrate them with your virtual environment. Um, the API, so as mentioned, Overt contains a REST API using standard HTTP protocols to control and monitor all resources in your virtual environment. Um, the API also defines capabilities for previous versions to help with backwards compatibility. And as I mentioned, there's also Python-based software development kit as well, and command line, um, as well as command line tools and scripting, scripting shell, plus UI plugin support. And I'll go into a bit more detail about UN, uh, UI plugin support because this is a relatively new feature. So what the UI plugins do is allow you to extend the web admin. Um, plugins are written in JavaScript and invoked on runtime, plus they're also invoked um, the moment of um, certain events. Um, so, for example, when a user logs in or, uh, say, a particular um, action, um, you click on a particular menu item. 
Um, to give you an example plugin, this is a basic Hello World um, example. Um, so you use your configuration file to define your plugin. And then you've got the host page, which allows you to actually um, write the plugin and integrate it within the, the web UI. So like I said, this is just a, a simple plugin that displays a window that says Hello World. Um, there's full documentation on the Overt website, uh, plus the samples as well. So there's a Foreman plugin, so it provides info on Foreman related entities such as VMs. Um, you're able to see the, the life cycle and monitor your VMs using Foreman and have that integrated directly into Overt. And then you've also got uh, shell in a box, um, which provides SSS connections, uh, SSH connections to hosts, um, and shell emulation, emulation with the UI. So say, for example, you need to do some host maintenance, you can do that directly through Overt with this particular plugin. Uh, getting Overt, so you can obtain it from the Overt website. There's um, two methods. We've got our um, official packages, plus there's also a live USB, which is probably the easiest method to get um, over an engine. Um, so basically, that's just live USB, plug it in, um, boot on live, uh, boot on USB, and you've pretty much got over an engine, and you can start attaching nodes straight away. You can build from source, um, and there's also the Fedora repositories, which are at the moment at over 3.1, our current version, um, I think, which is being released. Um, I'm not too sure if it's released now or if it's being released in the next couple of weeks, um, but the current one, the Fedora repositories are over at 3.1. Um, how to contribute and download, so you've got the, the website and the repository, and we've got our mailing list, and we've got um, an IRC channel as well. And that concludes my talk on Overt. Um, are there any questions? Say that again, what was that last bit? Yes. Yep, so. It's built in. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? Yep, up the back in the red shirt. Uh, no, not that I know of. Um, not that I know of either. that you couldn't replicate. Um, so would it be possible Quite possibly, yeah. I mean, uh, it's basically, the, the nodes are basically using VDSM and LiveVirt for control, so I don't see any problem being able to integrate that within, within Cloud Tech. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Um, yep, up the back. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, all I can really say is they found a way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently there's a queuing mechanism for for being able to write. Um, but yeah, apparently yes, you can share um, devices between two running VMs, um, storage devices between two running VMs, and you can hot plug and unplug and, yeah. Yo. With OpenStack? Yeah. Not that I know of, no. Um, but basically, uh, from what I understand, they're two, I guess, cloud products for two specific purposes. Um, they share similar functionality, but I guess the differences uh, depend more on the feature set in that case. So I guess there's some distinction between the two. Yep. Where would you say you should do OpenStack, not 
Um, I guess it depends. Like I said, on feature set, like with overt, um, and this is the thing. This also, uh, it's hard for me to comment because I've got a very limited knowledge of OpenStack as well. I've, I've used it, and I'm, I'm not too sure about the architectural um, underlyings. But um, I guess if I had to sort of pin something, it would be specific feature sets for both. Um, I don't know if I can yeah, be any more specific on that. But yeah, I guess it's sort of more, I guess over you sort of be looking more for, for enterprise yeah. style. Uh, yep. In the middle? Yeah. Oh. Just to come back to Joe's comment on common overt. Yep. The whole thing with overt is the API layer is full RESTful API. Mm -hmm. So one of the aims of Red Hat is that overt or rail or rail can be a platform for open stack to target. There's no reason why it also couldn't be a platform for uh, other cloud platforms to target and support the overt engine to manage. Absolutely, and I'll get into that um, in a minute with my next talk, which is on ELIS, which does exactly that. Um, so being able to integrate, yeah, OpenStack support um, through to to Overt. Um, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. um, in conjunction with um, live migration, is that a performance issue? Because Q, uh, uh, QMU has these things where you can use caching if you want to do if you want to be able to live migrate. Mm -hmm. um, it, does that apply here as well? So, will, hang on, let me take this. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Oh, yep. Yeah. I'll go up the back there, yep. Not really a replacement for Vert Manager. Vert Manager, I guess, is for more simple use cases, whereas this um, is more for, for large scaling and for um, being able to use, well, being able to run virtual machines without any downtime. Um, so to be able to live migrate, to have high availability there. Um, yeah, so I, Vert Manager, I think, is sort of more a, a simplified um, use case for, for KVM. Does that answer your question? Um, I've read that they're implementing a new version of VDSM, um, which actually it, um, uh, which uses, I think, um, I'm pretty sure it uses a, I can't remember now. Um, but basically, they're looking at implementing a new version of Overt um, as a library so that other, um, such as Clav, um, what was it, CloudStack? Yeah, such as the cloud stack could talk directly to um, the nodes. So yeah, I think there's a move to um, a newer version of VDSM more as a library. So um, probably not in the future. I think that that's being developed. Other questions? We had one over here. Yep. Can you talk a bit more about performance The performance monitoring, monitoring tools. Yeah, 
yep, that's integrated directly within the web UI within the tabs. Um, so you've got a section for each which displays what's being used. You can also do that for, say, your data centers. You can see, okay, what's happening in each data center. And then in, say, for example, uh, the clusters tab, you can actually see how your hosts are performing. That's this tabs for that within the, the UI. So it's built directly into the, the UI. Not only that, you've also got um, statistics tool, uh, statistics collections within the API, so you can actually monitor statistics via the API as well. On the hypervisor itself, I'm not too sure. 